I'm tired of being an assistant pastor. Our senior pastor only cares about himself, not God. He takes all the tithes and offering and leaves me with almost nothing. I'm sick of being his puppet. I can't even afford to buy a nice suit or provide for myself. I'm done being slave to this pastor. I'm going to start my own ministry where I can be fully in charge of church tithes and offering. I need to be independent, and also start to make my own money. I'm already dressed for church today, but you know what, I've changed my mind. I'm not going to church anymore. If pastor asked me why I didn't come, I'll just tell him I started developing a serious headache this morning. And it's not a lie, I do have headache from all the stress and frustration he has caused me. No more being held back, and by the time I start my own church, I'm sure I would become rich through tithes and offering. Happy Sunday to you pastor. I wish you a blessed Sunday sister Kate. Pastor, I was wondering, where is our assistant pastor today? I didn't see him in church. Well, I didn't see him today either. I'm not sure why he's not in church. I hope everything is okay. Everything is fine. I'm concerned too. I don't have any information about him being absent or why he wouldn't be here in church today. I hope he's okay. Maybe he traveled or something? Possibly. I have to reach out to him and find out what's going on. Okay, Pastor. Good afternoon, Pastor John. I noted you were not in church today. Is everything okay? I'm so sorry I missed church. I woke up with a severe headache this morning and couldn't make it. Oh, sorry about that Pastor John. Make sure you pray over your headache. Ask God to heal you and give you strength. Okay, Pastor. I will do that. Thank you so much Pastor for reaching out to me. I do appreciate you sir. It's my pleasure. Take care of yourself. Bye. Bye sir. It's not only pray, it's fast. Rubbish. The little money I have saved from the salary he gives me, I will use it to rent a hall and start my own church, I will also put outdoor publications on billboards and social media ads. By the time I start getting offerings and tithes from members, I will be living large. I will buy my own car and show it off. My time has come. Pastor John, congratulations on renting this hall for your new church. Thank you Mr. Ken. I have big plans for this new church that I'm about to inaugurate, and I'm eager to get started. I wish you the best. But please, adhere to the rules. No loud music. No crowd spilling out onto the sidewalk. No vigil. Of course, don't worry. I will make sure everything runs smoothly. And don't worry about the rent, be rest assured that I will pay on time. That's fine, I'm glad we understand each other. And who knows, maybe your church will bring new life to this neighborhood. I'm looking forward to that. Don't worry Mr. Ken, I will make sure the hall is taken care of. I've been feeling so blessed lately. Our church has been growing, and our senior pastor's sermon has been so inspiring. Lord, I'm so grateful for my church. What is this I'm seeing on this billboard? Pastor's John's face on the billboard, with the caption inaugurating his new church. So Pastor John will be leaving our church to start his own ministry. But why? Does it mean he was using our church as a stepping stone to launch his own church? I don't think our senior pastor knows about this. I'm so hurt. I thought we were a family. But I guess it's all about power and money. I just drove past a billboard displaying Pastor John's church inauguration. This is unbelievable. Pastor John is leaving our church to start his own. What does this mean for our church? Well, I feel this is betrayal from Pastor John, I don't think our senior pastor know about this. John, the reason I called you is because I saw your billboard on my way home from the market. What is that all about? I knew you would eventually see it. Mom, I'm starting my own church. My son, what are you doing? Leaving your church, you're an assistant pastor. What about your loyalty and commitment? 
I knew it may seem sudden, but I feel called to start my own church this time. If I may ask, did you get direction from God himself? Did you hear his voice? Did you see vision? Well, mom, I didn't think it was necessary. Oh, John you are playing with fire here. You can't just start a new church without sure it's God's will. What about the people you're taking with you? Have you considered their souls? Mom, I know what I'm doing. I'm not a kid anymore. I can make decisions on my own. John, I'm not questioning your maturity. I'm questioning your wisdom. Please son, don't rush into this. Seek God's face. Make sure this is his plan, not just yours. Happy Sunday to you pastor. I wish you the same Kate. Pastor. I was trekking home from work yesterday and I saw something that really caught my attention. Oh, what was it? It's a billboard with a familiar face on it. Whose face is on the billboard? Someone from our church starting his own church. And if I may ask, who is that person? It's Pastor John. It just seemed really sudden. And I wasn't sure if you knew about it. Thank you so much Kate. I appreciate your concern. Pastor, what do you think about this situation? Are you okay with it? Well, I trust that God is in control. Praise the Lord. Alleluia. I welcome you all to our first service. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Today, I want to talk about something that's very important to our walk with God. Giving. Specifically, I want to talk about tithing and sowing seed. You see when we give to God, we are not just giving money, we are giving back to Him what is already His. The Bible says in Malachi 3 verse 10. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord, Almighty, and see if I will not throw open floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will be room enough to store it. May God bless you as you obey His command to give. Amen. Go in peace, and may the Lord be with you always. Thank you for coming, everyone, may the Lord bless you this week. Amen. Hi sister, happy Sunday to you. Thank you, I wish you the same. How was church service for you? It wasn't bad, but... But what? I was expecting something different being their first service. Can you imagine the first sermon was centered on giving, tithing? I understand what you mean. You were expected the pastor to preach about salvation. Exactly. I thought it would be more about welcoming people and sharing the good news. But giving, it feels like the pastor is already asking for money. I feel the pastor is putting the cart before the horse. Shouldn't he focus on building a community first? Maybe he is trying to build strong foundation. And giving is a big part if that. Well, you may be right. I hope he doesn't make it about money. Let's just keep an open mind and see where God takes this church. All right, bye. Bye. Only three members showed up on our first service, I can't believe it. After all the money I spent on publicity, after all the effort I put into making this inauguration service a success. Only three members was in my first inauguration service. This is a disaster. What did I do wrong? I guess I did everything right. I rented a beautiful venue, I printed flyers, I made announcements on social media. What more could I have done? I was expecting to see nothing less than 50 people on my first service. I can't continue like this, how am I even supposed to pay for rent, what about my own personal gain? Well, I guess I will have to keep hope alive. Hopefully, next Sunday, things will get better. I won't give up on my dream of becoming a general overseer. And if by next week, things continues like this, I will find a solution and do whenever it is to bring multitudes of people into my church. Dear brethren, welcome to today's service. Last week, we talked about the importance of giving to God, and today, I want to continue that message. Tithes and offerings are not just about giving money to the church, they are about showing our gratitude to God for all that He has given us. When we tithe, we are giving back to God a small portion of what He has already given us. We are showing Him that we recognize His blessing in our lives. So dear brethren, let us trust in God's provision and care for us. 
Let us show our gratitude for his blessings in our lives. Let us tithe and give offerings joyfully and generously. Why is pastor always preaching about money? Tithes, offerings, giving, giving, giving. It's like that all what he cares about. Last week, it was the same thing. Give to God, give to God. I'm moving out of this place. I'm not going to sit here and listen to this kind of message every week. Why have they left? Only two people in church today, last week was even better. I had three members. I don't understand. I'm trying to spread the word of God, and they just get up and leave. Maybe I'm not convinced enough, I think I need to work on my sales pitch. I can't believe I'm stuck in this tiny church with no congregation. I had big dreams, I was going to be a famous pastor, with a huge followers and fat bank account, but I'm stuck here, preaching to empty seats. How do I get members? I know what to do. The great wise man, greeting to you. My name is Pastor John. Why are you here? I've come to seek receive a charm to help my church grow. I want people to flock my service and fills all the seats in the auditorium. I shall grant your request, if you're willing to pay the price. I will do anything. I shall give you a charm that will draw people to your church. But it must be used wisely, for there shall be consequences, if you fail to comply. Okay. The great wise man. You must pay the gods a sacrifice on weekly basis. Failure to do so, the gods will destroy you. I will make sure to come and pay the sacrifice on weekly basis. Thank you the great wise man. Yesterday, I sprinkled the charm around my precious church, just as the great wise man instructed. The unsuspecting souls who will wander into my trap. They think they're just taking a stroll, but little do they know that they're being drawn in by the charm. And once they step their foot in my church, I will make sure my sermon entices them. And the whole city will be shocked at how a church that's barely three months old is so full. My competitors in other ministries will be wondering at the secret of my success. And the higher the number of congregations, the higher the money I make. Today, I want to talk to you about the importance of giving to God. We all know that God is a loving Father who provides for our needs, but we often forget that He also expects us to give back to Him. In Matthew 23 verse 23, Jesus says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees hypocrites, for your tithe mint, drill, and cumin, and have neglected the weightier matters of the law. Here, Jesus is emphasizing the importance of tithing. When we give to God, we are not just giving money, we are showing him that we trust in his provision and that we are ready to surrender our lives to him. I know that some of you may be thinking, but pastor I don't have enough money to give. Well, let me tell you, it's not about the amount you give, it's about the attitude of your heart. Even the smallest offering M can be a sacrifice of M it's given with a genuine heart. So I encourage you to examine your heart and wallet. Are you giving to God what is rightfully his? Brethren, let us commit to giving to God with a willing heart, and let us trust that He will bless us in abundantly in return. Praise the Lord. It's offering time. This morning we shall be collecting offerings and this include 1. Love offering, to show love to pastor. 2. Special offering, this special offering is important so that it can be used to pay pastor salary. 3. Thanksgiving offering, because, it is written in the Bible that in all situations, always give thanks. So brethren I encourage you all to give thanksgiving offering. 4. Rent offering. To help pay for the church rent, this auditorium we're using is rented. 5. Faithful followers offering. For those who want to show their dedication. 6. Prosperity offering. If you know you want to prosper in whatever you lay your hands on, you are highly encouraged to partake in this offering. 7. Miracle offering. For those expecting miracle, Make sure you give God a tangible offering so that your miracle can happen quickly. And lastly, tithing offering. Giving 10% of your income is the least you can do. What a service. Pastor John was filled with the Holy Spirit. I loved every moment of the service. The moment that caught my attention most was during the offering time. When pastor screamed, miracle offering, I screamed so loud because I'm expecting miracle a husband for my daughter, and prosperity in my business. Who wouldn't want a miracle? Let me go see Mrs. Carty and share this good news to her. 
Happy Sunday, Mrs. Carty. Happy Sunday, Mrs. Thompson, you are welcome. Thank you. I'm so glad I went to Pastor John's church today. The service was amazing. Oh, really? I was there last week, but I didn't stay long. Why didn't you stay long? I was so disappointed. That church is all about money, money, money. The pastor in charge doesn't care about the salvation of souls. That's not true. Pastor John is a man of God. He preaches the word and helps people. Help people by asking them to give offerings every five minutes. I have been to churches that actually care about their members, and Pastor John's church is not one of them. Well, maybe you didn't get it. The offerings are used for a good things, not what you're thinking. Good things like funding the pastor's lifestyle. Mrs. Carty, please don't be fooled, open your spiritual mind. Well, I felt God's presence today. Look, I'm not saying that you didn't have a genuine experience. But you need to open your eyes and see what's really going on. A good pastor is humble, transparent, and put the needs of others before his own. I believe Pastor John lacks those qualities. He is more concerned with building his own empire that service the flock. I never thought of it that way. A good church should focus on surrendering lives to Christ, reminding us our sins, and our need for redemption, and encouraging us to live a life that honors God. Not just constantly asking for money. You mean the pastor is more concerned about getting rich than helping his members? Exactly. I'm not saying that collecting offerings is bad. But when it becomes the main focus of the church, that's a problem. Too much of it is bad. A good church should be welcoming and inclusive to all, regardless of their financial situation. Not just catering to the wealthy and ignoring the poor. If Pastor John doesn't stop loving money more than God, he may fall. Mark my words. The Bible says in Proverbs 16 verse 18, Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. His pride and love for money will be his downfall, if he doesn't change his ways. Once again, mark my words. Goodbye. Or Lord, I'm so concerned about the state of that church. They are so focused on money and material gain, they've lost sight of what's truly important. Your message is being watered down, and your people are being led astray. I know that's not what you teach. You taught us to store treasures in heaven, not on earth. You taught us to love and serve others, not just ourselves. I pray that the congregation, that you will open their eyes so they can see what's going on. I'm so confused. I thought I had found a church that was truly serving the Lord, but now I'm not so sure. Mrs. Thompson's words have really made me think. I remember how excited it was when I first started attending the church, the sermon was inspiring, but now that I think about it, it's all been a bit superficial. It seems Pastor John put so much emphasis on money and material wealth. But what about the poor and needy? Are they less important to God? Well, if by next Sunday, Pastor John is still preaching about offering and giving, that will be my last time going there. Madam, the reason why I wanted to see you is because the Lord revealed to me that you're going through something. Oh Pastor, how did you know? Holy Spirit thank you. The Lord tells me all things. So Madam what's troubling you? It's my daughter, she hasn't found a husband, and also my business is not flourishing like I thought it would. Oh my goodness. I see. Madam don't worry, wipe away your tears, the Lord has solution for that. He asked me to tell you to sow a seed of faith. Sow a seed of faith? Yes, the Lord says that if you can sow a seed of $1,000, He will bless your business and cause it to prosper. I don't think I can afford that amount right now. Can I sow a seed of lesser amount? No, madam. The least amount you can sow is $1,000. Come on madam. Don't be sad. You cannot bargain on the blessings of the Lord. Besides, it's written in the Bible that of whosoever sow it sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whosoever sow it bountifully shall reap bountifully. So, the ball is in your court. I need to think about it. You don't need to think about it. Just obey the Lord. Pastor, I need to go. No problem. Oh no. How come that woman didn't fall into my trap? I thought she would be writing a check of $1,000 by now. 
Well, I can't win them all. Some members will fall into my trap. It's been month already, and I haven't made any sacrifices to the gods. I mean, I haven't made any money. What's really going on? I asked the great wise man to give me the charm to bring people into my church in multitudes, but he didn't give me the charm to convince them to drop their offerings by force. I've been so focused on getting people in my church, but I forgot to ensure they would be willing to part with their hard-earned cash. But wait, that's not the only problem. I've only been preaching giving, but not actually providing any real spiritual guidance. Greeting to you the great wise man. Pastor John, the last time you came here was when you begged for the gods to help influx of people into your church. You promised to pay your weekly sacrifice, to feed the gods and keep them happy, but since then, you have neglected your duties. You have forgotten the gods, Pastor John. You have forgotten the ones who helped you achieve your goals. You have taken our help for granted, and now you must face the consequences. Please the great wise man, help me beg the gods. No. It's too late to beg the gods. Henceforth, as you have kept the gods hungry for sacrifice, so shall you be hungry. You will lack and beg, but no one shall provide for you. Your church shall wither and die, and your people shall forsake you. Pastor John. You shall know hunger, you shall know want. You will know the desperation of the beggar. And when you come crawling back, begging for scraps from the gods' table, the gods will turn their backs on you. So shall it be. Pastor John, you're behind on rent, and so therefore, I've seized all your music instruments until you pay up. Could you please give me some time, I'm expecting some money soon. I promise to pay you. Save it. You can afford to buy nice suits, but you cannot pay rent. You better pay me my money, because I need it to take care of myself, I need to buy medication to sustain my health. Please help me, help me, spare me some change. I need money to eat. Please help me. Look at you. Greedy pastor. You will continue to beg for the rest of your life. 